G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler being converted by a community of rat bags into a global expedition and research boat. This week, we're finishing our anchor. We didn't want this to drag on. <laughs> we opened the mail. <laughs> so, um, Darren and Annie asked if we'd like a barometer, and um, they sent this over from New Zealand. It's just the most gorgeous, like, it's just stunningly beautiful piece of kit. It's just awesome. So that's definitely getting mounted somewhere prominent. Um, but he said, is there anything else you'd like from New Zealand? And I said, oh, can I have a cookie time cookie? A uh, cookie time cookie. These are amazing. And he sent over a whole <laughs> box of them. <laughs> so I was thinking of doing like cookie time angels on the ground. I'll just <laughs> lay there and flap about. Yeah. If you've not tried one of these, definitely try one. They're awesome. So that's, um, that is amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Darren and Annie from New Zealand, thank you so much for this. So back to some work. Trevor got on with finishing cutting out the weights for the front of the anchor. So the rain's happening. Trev's still grinding out, isn't it? We thought you might like to see the wheelhouse installed on top of the cabin of a new build catamaran. So what I'm making, I need the tip to be weighted more than it is. You can't just have a single blade like this, it won't have enough weight on the tip. So I'm adding another layer of 20 mil. So what I need to do is basically notch out this area here where it goes through the shank, and then that whole bit is gonna be welded up. So there's gonna be a bit of a gap that will weld up, but um, yeah, we'll probably get in right in there with a stick welder right in the root, and then fill it up, cap it with a MIG weld. Um, but there's gonna be probably three layers of weld on, on every surface. Uh, sorry, on every uh, edge, and then along this edge here where there's a big 40mm flat piece, um, that's going to be chamfered right off, so we'll get the 9 inch in there with a the cutoff disc, and we'll cut that right back. So this bit that I'm trimming with the grinder now, you can sort of see that it's cut on a bit of an angle, so it goes along maybe 3 inches or so, but at this end here you can pretty much see the angle that I'm cutting it at, and what that allows, is when you come over to the piece that's sitting on this anchor, is the, the additional piece of steel is now has a vertical edge as opposed to it being on an angle or anything like that and there's quite a gap in there which is plenty to weld up that's going to be easy but it's mainly just to clear that big weld I don't want to have to grind any of that weld out if I can help it I just want to fill everything up I have to get better at stick welding. Um, I've got some pretty structural stick welding to do on these wings. One of the um, solutions when I was talking to some of the pros was um, to actually grind out and stick weld the cracks that we've been having on these little cheeks. So part of that is I'm gonna use this anchor as a bit of a practice run. Um, I've got some four mil 7016 uh, sticks. I'm gonna have a go at those and see if we can get a nice bead running.
there we go ugly ugly welds so yeah we've got heaps of undercut we've got fusion randomly placed across the bead that's crap i could spend ages figuring out how to stick weld i'm not going to um i hate stick welding and i can mig weld just as good with um like thick steel and stuff as we've shown before so yeah i'm just going to give up on stick welding for a while it's not for me hundred times nicer beads look at that mig welding one day i'll learn the lesson i'm not really that great at stick welding I think we're going to call that bead satisfactory. So that's me done for the day. There's an absolute mozza of weld on that. You can sort of see here if I can show you down close. There you go. I can't even remember how many runs we put on that. Bucket loads. So there's a little bit of undercut on the left hand side. Um, you can just sort of make it out along there maybe. But what my plan is is actually to blend a lot of that in. So I'll probably um, get the 9 inch on there when that cools down tomorrow. I'll get the 9 inch on there and just um, give that sort of edge a bit of a whiz over and round that all off. Same deal with the back. It's three runs on the back, that's not gonna go anywhere. Um, but I'll clean that edge up and make sure that that's gone. So the two plates were cut slightly different size. One was a, like half a centimeter or a centimeter too big. Um, but what I did to account for that is just essentially move them, move the big plate forward so that the back end perfectly aligns because we're gonna cut most of the sides um, off these plates anyway. So one overhangs a bit more than the other and it's gonna make no difference by the time we actually do the bevel on this with the nine inch. It's another dead calm night in the yard. So finished up for the day, just finished welding the anchor there, as you just saw. But this is what it's like working at the end of the day in the yard, it's kind of beautiful. There's just no one around. You get the whole yard to yourself, it's awesome. So this morning, we've got quite a bit going on. Trev's over again. We have given a electric wheelchair that Jess had under the boat in storage. We're giving that a bit of a clean so we can get that going. Put some new batteries in, that sort of thing. And uh, this morning's job, we're gonna finish off the anchor. We're gonna cut some chamfers along this edge. We'll weld in some gussets down on the back here. And then we'll give it a general tidy up so we can send it off to be galvanized. It's starting to get stinking hot. So we set up a big shade sail to work under. However, that does mean we have to drag this anchor, something it was specifically not designed to do.
these shapes want cut? Yeah, I had a thought about them. Yeah. If we taper it off like that, we're going to end up with a taper up here after weld. So we need to lift that to be 20 mil high. We need to put some little shoulders um, on the edge here. So basically it goes from the, the bottom edge of this down maybe, I don't know, 250 mil, something like that to about here, and then back up here. It acts as a gusset for this piece of the hoop, but it also acts like a little um, sort of bit that sticks out on an angle. And essentially what that does is when the anchor falls down from the bow of the boat and it's sitting in this orientation here, essentially on its side, it, it tips it up so that the point of the anchor is, is dug in, makes it really awkward for the anchor to not dig in. Um, so kind of where Trev's making it now, that's where we'll be welding them on. Just This is a bit of 10 mil um, plate, so we'll just use a bit of 10 mil because it's not going to take a huge amount. It only just take the weight of the anchor, 10 mil's easily going to accommodate that. We're halfway through. So instead of it being a 40 mil piece of steel, it's uh, 47. 47. Oh, come on, seriously? 47 and a half. Oh, I was, I was gonna guess to make like 60 mil. Oh, you're gonna make a really good story out of it. Sound like a wuss now. <laughs> Thanks, Trev. <laughs> you're doing a wussy job, man. So here's my 47 and a half millimeter piece of steel that I'm cutting. <laughs> so you can sort of see I've gone through the first layer um, and we're into the second layer. We've run out of depth on the uh, nine inch grinder. So we need to get uh, a new blade in there so we can reach the last bits um, as we work along that edge. I just had this magical shot set up with the camera and then the battery went flat. However, chamfer's cut, so what I've got to do now, I'm going to blend in this top corner here, and then Trev's also where that little mark is. Uh, where are we? Just there. That's where the front of that um, angled gusset plate thing is going to be. So he's going to give it a quick cut and get that bit trimmed out. You're going to have to breathe out to weld it. I've got to get a flat 1mm and just go straight in. Good. I'll get a 1mm a and just go straight in all the way along. Cut like a 10mm sort of V, if that makes sense. And then I'll fill the whole thing up and just grind it back. So we've got our area to, to cut. There you go. You can see there's an angle that we have to cut basically just there. From that nick that's in the top follow that black line across and then we're going to be able to link it up with the edge that Trev's just cleaned up with the grinder. So I got to join these two bits of steel together and my plan, they're not welded on this edge at the moment, but my plan is to basically cut along that black line that I've just marked in there and make sort of like a maybe 5 to 10 mil V um, in that area and then just fill it all up with weld and then grind it back. So the weld, like 70% of the weld will be under the surface, then grind off the top so that it's a flat finish and then we'll be able to, um, you won't even know that that's welded when we cold galvanise it. Hot galvanise it. Do something. Stop it rusting. So this edge has been basically welded and ground back. So we've cut that slot, we've welded it up, and um, yeah, that's ready to go. That side's pretty much finished. This one here, did a bit of a weld down there, 
um, this is the little shoulder cheek thing that does a couple of jobs braces this bar and then also acts like a little um, direction vein I suppose you could think of it as when the anchors in this orientation on the other side there when the when the little um, direction bar things down the bottom it's going to point the anchor so that it goes nose down What we're trying to do, we've taken the chamfer out with the nine inch as much as we can and in this corner we have to kind of blend it in but it's a bit difficult because you sort of got to do a couple of different angles at once and the nine inch starts to get a bit brutal so we're just going to chop it out with the five inch um, the five inch grinder with a one mil disc and just slice it from both sides and then we'll clean the feather the um, chamfer it all back with a grinding disc once we're in there and it's all cleaned up and done. So we've got to fill this edge up right the way along here with weld. We've V'd it out with the grinder, cut a little slot into it. But what we need to do down at the front here, because the front is so fine, if I put heaps of weld heat and amperage and so on into that, it's just going to basically evaporate. So you use this bit of steel here as a backing plate and it allows you to weld it. It will weld to that steel, but you can break that off and then sort of clean it all up with the grinder. Just means you don't end up with the front just disappearing with undercut. So we'll then go, we'll go through and we'll basically fill all of this up, including right at the back here where we've sort of cleaned up, V'd out, etc. So we'll get that looking nice and then we'll give it a grind up. Trev's made the little gussets that go in the corner here, so we're gonna cap the top off like that and make it solid. We'll weld all the way around so it'll all be one bit of steel in the end. And then we've got the, the side sort of cheek area thing. So we're just trying to duplicate that on the other side. That works out fine. 10 mil works fine on that, doesn't it? Looks like it. all flush. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Looks like it. Yeah. So progress so far, we have our bevel cut. You can kind of see it quite quite cleanly there. Nicely chamfered at the front, we'll do a bit more on that. We'll probably give this weld down the center line a bit of a grind up, just to clean generally. And then our two plates, one on that side there, one on that side there, are welded in. So all we've got left to do is, like I say, do that clean up work, and then we'll flip it over and we'll weld the horn. Because the rest of it's perfect. So. <laughs> <They're right. laughs> so this is our finished anchor. Pretty happy with that. So tomorrow we'll go through and we'll just like clean up some of the edges, grind them around, but basically that's our anchor done. So we've got our extra extra padding at the front so we've got a bit more weight on the tip we've got our big chamfer so that it'll cut in nicely we've got our little i don't know what you want to call them 
lug things on the corner so that it redirects. So actually, where it's sitting right now, if I come back here, kind of a good example. If it sits on the bottom like that, and is getting pulled along by the anchor chain, that corner works really well. You can sort of see, if I go right down low, you can see there on the ground, it basically angles it up so that that tip is digging into the ground, which is exactly what the tip's doing right now. So it kind of shows that the design works, even though it's a hard gravel versus like soft sand, etc. And then we've got our horn that we put in, well, what we're calling the horn, and then you've got the blade area itself. So the blade, pretty nice and smooth and lovely. The triple continuous welds all the way around both sides of that shank, and then with it sticking through on the bottom there, I think we had, God, it must have been eight or nine runs or something like that. It was, I forget how many it was, it was bucket loads on the bottom, but there's no way that's ever coming out. And then a little bit of strengthening that we added to this end. So it's basically a strap around the original hole just to make sure that we've got plenty of steel there. Would you like to see your anchor? Oh. oh wow. I love these side things. They're cool, eh? They're awesome, eh? Wow. Do you like that bar? Is that what you're envisioning? Oh my god. <laughs> Didn't even see it. <laughs> After a bit of a tidy up, we took the anchor in for galvanising. We should get it back in a couple of weeks. So the anchor's now with the galvanizers. When we get that back, we'll show you what it's like. We've uh, also finished the wing um, alignment of the hinges on wing number two, so we're gonna get Bruce back shortly and we'll get that fitted to the hull in the background. We've also started welding up the arms, so we've got a nice uh, leading edge and trailing edge and all of the work involved in building those coming up shortly. You got ice like summer sky. If it's my good kill, I die. And now it starts to rain, so let's enjoy it.